Canada's role in kind of helping the bully, Canada's role in kind of helping out with all this. I mean, clearly we don't make these wars, we just fight in them, right? Uh, but I, I would argue that that role we're playing is very crucial, very, very helpful to the U.S. I mean, not only are we providing troops uh, in the dangerous south part of the country, and thereby, of course, freeing up troops, American troops, that would otherwise have to be there uh, to go off onto Iraq. Uh, so we're doing some, as they say, very heavy lifting down there. But I would argue more importantly, uh, we are providing by supporting the U.S. over there so, so enthusiastically, uh, we are providing our good reputation in the world uh, on behalf of that war and on behalf of the so-called war on terror. You know, it's funny, and one of the favorite things of the right these days is to argue, uh, you know, that Canada has no respect in the world, right? Canada's nothing, because we don't have a big enough, big enough military. In fact, by the way, we do have a really a large military. Uh, in fact, we are the sixth biggest military spender in NATO, uh, we're in the top third of NATO, so even that argument that we don't spend enough is absurd. But that, of course, is their argument that we aren't respected in the world. In fact, we have a great deal of respect in the world. Uh, some of it earned, some of it not earned. But the truth is Canada is one of the most widely respected countries in the world. And, you know, what we're doing is we're taking that good reputation and we're lending it to the Bush administration to fight its wars. I mean, we are basically you know, giving a kind of legitimacy to a regime that is even, uh, you know, has no legitimacy in the eyes of the broader, uh, you know, bro in the eyes of the world, not to mention the ideas of, of the American public for that matter. In fact, we're playing a crucial role as America's uh, kind of supporter within NATO. I mean, this whole business, this whole notion that you know, we have to meet our NATO obligations is ludicrous. I mean, we know perfectly well that in fact, virtually none of those NATO countries want to be in Afghanistan either. Certainly the publics in those countries don't want to be in Afghanistan. And that's why it's so difficult to get that extra thousand troops that Canada so, and, and the US is so desperately looking for. Because the publics in the big NATO countries have really reacted vigorously, as the Canadian public has, and the governments in those countries don't want to commit. Certainly they don't want to commit to the counterinsurgency war that we're fighting. So in fact they're up in the northern part of the country or you know, there's restrictions on how deeply they can be involved. And Canada is playing this crucial role within NATO, kind of playing uh, the heavy for, for, for George Bush, you know, arguing that we need uh, you know, that, that we all have to get on board and support this effort. I mean, what NATO basically is, you know, is just a fig leaf for U.S. power, but it gives this illusion that there's some kind of multinational group of countries uh, that are willing to participate and eager to participate in this war. In fact, it would be interesting to imagine if Canada uh, were to pull out, uh, in fact, we hear a lot of, Commentators say, well, you know, if we, if Canada pulled out, uh, you know, the whole thing might collapse. <laughs> As if that's a problem, you know? <laughs> In fact, they suggest even NATO might collapse. I mean, would that be so bad? <laughs> and one of the things I find really striking, and I, I've been told I should uh, maybe wind it up here, um, and, and, you know, we, then we'll have lots of time for questions, but I just, I, I, I guess I just want to make a point. It, it, it's striking to me, you know, to, to the extent that the Canadian media, uh, you know, criticizes Stephen Harper at all, the criticism tends to be, you know, oh, he's really arrogant or he's really controlling. Uh, I mean, it strikes me the real problem with Stephen Harper isn't just those things, which he is arrogant and controlling vis-a-vis -vis the Canadian public, but the real problem is the way he kowtows to Bush. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not, they, they portray him as, as some kind of big, strong guy. In fact, he's a wimp. 
you know, he's, he's, being sub- he's making Canada subservient to the United States and he's t- turning that into some kind of positive thing. Uh, in fact, it strikes me that, um, you know, with the resignation of Tony Blair or the retirement of Tony Blair last summer, you know, Harper um, has really become, you know, Bush's chief ally. You could, you could argue he's really Bush's chief poodle. Um, but of course that's never the way the media portray 